In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to break down your Cabo and then reassemble it for potential service and repair. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how to clean your components. I trust that you can do that. At the end of the day, the most important thing is just to not let your reel rust. Some items you might want is a small tackle box so you can sort loose components by their subgroups. You're gonna want a number 11 socket, needle nose pliers, a thorough or complete micro screwdriver set, and then a regular screwdriver set for normal size fasteners. Let's not waste any more time and just get right into it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our off hand and secure the body and rotor, and then we're gonna take our dominant hand and unscrew the handle assembly clockwise, and then that just pops on off. There's these two screws. You could further disassemble the handle, but that's good enough. Next, we're gonna unscrew the drag knob all the way. It's gonna pop right on off. It has a little black seal on it, and then our spool pops off. Now we can take out our retaining ring and what that retaining ring does is it secures all our top drag washers. So now all those drag washers will come out. And as I'm pulling them out of the spool, I lay them out in the order that they come out of the reel. So we got retaining ring, we got an inside keyed metal washer, we got a carbon washer, an outside keyed washer, carbon washer, and then a inside keyed washer, that's metal, carbon washer, and then an outside keyed washer. So there you go, I line them all up in order as they come out. And then you can restack them and put them in your small tackle box. Next, we're gonna unscrew the three drag retainer screws. So you got this little ring that pops out that's black. Just like that. Now our drag plate uh, is free. It has the line clicker assembly and a little washer that just popped out. Now that line clicker assembly, I just left it. It was pretty clean. And now I pulled out these two little washers. Now the center of this drag plate has two spool adjust washers. So don't lose those. And then there's the line clicker. It was clean. Uh, you can disassemble that if you want, uh, or you can just leave it. Now let's expose are some bottom side uh, drag washers that are bigger. So we got a carbon friction washer, a metal external keyed washer, and then a basic like polymer washer, kind of like a Teflon material, and those three uh, can just be set aside. And now our spool bearing is exposed and that just pops on out. So you have this cool sealed uh, bearing for your spool and that enhances your drag system. So that's a really nice feature on this Cabo. Now we'll just take all these components and sort them uh, nice and neatly in our tackle box by their respective groups. Now that drag retainer, uh, I put all the screws back in it, that way I don't lose them. Those are really small screws. Next thing is the side plate. There are four screws that take a star bit. So that's why you need that assorted micro screwdriver set. And you can see there I use needle nose pliers to uh, apply a little bit of leverage. And then your side plate pops off. And then there's a little bearing. So make sure you don't lose that bearing. And we can just pop that little bearing out of the little side plate. And I'll just put it back there for storage. If that was dirty, you could wipe it down and oil it. So I'm gonna put all the screws back in it and then put that whole component group uh, in one little box of the tackle box. All right, now using pin terminology, it's now time to take out the crosswind block. And you do that by backing out the crosswind screw. So we'll just back that little screw out, fast forward it, and that pops out. And then now our main shaft can pull out of the uh, rotor. So it may take a little finesse, but boom, the main shaft just pops right on out. And uh, we can go ahead and stash that. And now our main gear is free. And it's this beautiful brass uh, gear. And there's these two little washers on the right side there that I'm kind of peeling off so you can see. Make sure you don't lose those. If they're dirty, go ahead and clean them. Now our little crosswind block pulls off and then I'll put the crosswind screw in its respective hole and stash that in the tackle box as well. Now our crosswind gear is exposed. So we can take our normal size screwdriver, loosen it up, take the micro, speed up the process and then our uh, crosswind gear pulls out. Now the back side of the crosswind uh, gear has a, a washer and a small bearing. Well that small bearing is actually in front and the washer's uh, behind. So just realize that those are there and don't lose those. So that little component group goes by itself. Now we can just unscrew the handle cap. And then we can punch out the uh, other sealed bearing. Just be careful you don't damage them. And then there it is, and we can stash that. So if we flip that rotor up, we have a retaining plate. That little screw pops out real quick, and then your retaining plate is free. And now the rotor nut's exposed. So now we're gonna take that lemon socket and unscrew that rotor nut, and it pops right on off. And then our rotor comes off, it is now free. We can set that aside. Now we got a bearing plate, or a bearing holding plate. And it has three screws, so I will use my micro screwdrivers and my normal screwdriver to back those out. 
So there the bearing holding plate is removed and then I call it the pinion pack uh, o-ring or pinion pack sealed and that kind of helps keep uh, crap out of your pinion pack. Now the whole pinion pack pulls out um, it left its roller clutch behind so right now uh, we have our uh, pinion bearing and a pinion washer that sits on top of it so don't lose that washer and then here's your pinion pack o-ring we'll put that on top of the washer and then the roller clutch sleeve pops off of the pinion gear. All right, doing a little quality control and post-production here. What was left behind was the roller bearing, which is an actual clutch. It's an anti-reversing clutch, so that keeps your main shaft going in one direction. And what I'm about to explain are two plastic bushings that I'm incorrectly calling it clutches. So these videos are really long. There's a lot to them. So sometimes in post-production, I often have to do a correction. All right, back to the video. Now the pinion gear has accommodations for uh, a clutch, a plastic clutch on the top and then a clutch is in the body on the bottom here that I'm, I'm punching out right now. So these two little pla black plastic clutches go uh, on the bottom and on the top of the pinion gear and we'll show you how to assemble that once we reassemble the entire reel. Now we have a stripped down body. All right, what I'm pointing at here is the trip ramp or the trip bumper. It has one single screw, wipe it off if it's dirty, otherwise just throw a little bit of oil on it and probably not worth disassembling that. Now we can disassemble the rotor assembly. So now we have our line roller screw and we'll just back that out and it has a little plastic washer on it. Now we can pull out our bail wire and then that will free the line roller. Now this first bearing that exposed has two little washers, tiny washers on either side of it. So what I would do is pull that bearing out and then keep those two washers together with that bearing. So here I am just kind of rotating around, popping that tiny little bearing out. And there's one washer that you can see and the other washers there on the, on the tray. So you got one, two washers and one bearing. Now we flip over the line roller and we have a second bearing on the back side. And what I've noticed is that line roller is ambidextrous, so I don't think the orientation really matters on that line roller. Now we can take our E-clip out, one of our bail arms, and what that did is it popped a little pin out and you can see it down on the tray. And that little pin popped off and then now our bail arm and bail wire is free. So we'll stash those and then we'll stash that E-clip. Now we can take the uh, E-clip out of our uh, trip bail arm. So we'll call it the main bail arm. And it's magnetic. So it's pretty cool, pretty simplistic. So that pin pops out because the clip is no longer there. And then we can take our bail cover, or rotor cover rather. We can take the rotor cover off. It has two screws. It's a little plastic component. And then there's our trip lever. So a little trip lever uh, pulls out. Uh, the long side is on the bottom. Short side will be on top. So now we have a stripped down Cabo. So uh, after you clean all the components, it's time to reassemble. So what we're gonna take is we're gonna take our strip rotor. We'll grab our little trip lever and the long foot goes on the bottom, the short foot goes on top, and then we'll take our rotor cover, line it up, and then insert the two screws. So take that uh, trip lever and extend it upwards all the way, as shown. Now we're gonna put our magnetic bail arm on, and that's what the alignment looks like, a nice close up. Make sure that little uh, foot gets into the appropriate uh, channel. Now we're going to insert our pin. It may take a little adjustment. You can see there I put pressure on my thumb, kind of push it forward, and then it'll accept the pin. Now we'll take our E-clip with our needle nose and put it into the groove of that pin. And now that magnetic bail arm is attached. Now we can align up our second bail arm. We'll call it the secondary bail arm and line it up, put the pin in it, take our needle nose, put the E-clip in the, the needle nose point, push in that pin all the way, and then there's little grooves that that little E-clip slides into. And now our bail arms are attached to the rotor. Now we're gonna take our line roller, we're gonna grab these little washers. I found a uh, the screwdriver works out great. So put on the first washer, grab the bearing and then grab the second washer, slide them together, and now we can insert them into the side of the line roller super easy. So that's just me showing you how to do that. 
take the line roller, slide all those components in and hold it down with your thumb. Then on the opposite side, we can put the remaining bearing and now our line roller assembly is complete and we can attach it to our uh, line roller bail arm assembly. And this is what the schematic looks like. So it's two washers sandwiching a bearing that goes on the front and then on the back side there's another bearing. So that just slides on there to our line roller housing and then rotate that bail arm until you have alignment and it clicks in and then we can just take our line roller screw and tighten it down. You, you can see how those the line roller on the bail arm and the uh, the line roller and the bail arm have like a, a little groove and they line up to each other nicely. And then just make sure your line roller rotates freely and that your bail arm uh, goes up and down. Next we're going to put together the pinion pack. And these are all the components that you're going to need. So what we do is we take our pinion gear, we put on the small plastic bushing on the bottom, if you removed it from the body. And then there's our roller sleeve and that's the orientation that we want facing upwards. This is the orientation that we want facing uh, down on the pinion gear. So we slide on our uh, clutch sleeve, we take our roller clutch, make sure the white is facing downwards, and we slide the roller clutch over the sleeve. Now we can take our pinion bearing, put that on the pinion gear, and then grab our pinion washer that goes on top of the pinion bearing. And then we can get our small plastic uh, bushing that goes on top. And that helps uh, with fitment between your main shaft and your uh, pinion gear. <clears throat> now we can put the pinion pack in the body and rotate it until it seeks alignment and presses into the body. So there we go. Pinion pack is inserted into the reel. Now starting left to right, top to bottom, what we need next is the pinion pack o-ring, the bearing holding plate with its three respective screws, the rotor nut, the rotor nut retaining plate, rotor nut retaining plate screw, and then the handle cap that's plastic, and then the handle bearing. All right, so we'll take our handle bearing, place it in the right side of the body. Then we're gonna grab our handle cap, screw that in on the right side. And then we have our own O-ring for our pinion pack. <clears throat> and there's a little groove between the bearing and the body and that little O-ring just fits in real nicely uh, around that. And that's a good O-ring to make sure you have greased up. All right, there's our bearing holding plate and it's three screws and we'll just tighten that down. Just like that. And now we can take our rotor, align it on the pinion gear and it'll slide down. Next we can take our rotor nut and screw it on the uh, pinion gear, tighten it down nice and gently with that needle nose, and then take the socket and uh, really tighten it down. Quick public service announcement, don't over tighten your rotor nut, you don't want to be stripping threads, so just until it's nice and snug, and that applies to all the fasteners, just tighten them until they're snug, uh, they're not going to go anywhere, um, I just don't want you stripping threads. Alright, back to the video. Now that needle nose was more to uh, seek alignment with the threads and not necessarily tighten down the nut because my fingers were too fat to get in there and get, get some leverage on it. So then we'll take the rotor nut retaining plate, put that on and tighten down its respective screw. Just like that. So now our rotor is assembled onto the reel. All right, now we take our crosswind gear and with the black washer facing towards the body, we insert it into its uh, respective home and then make sure the crosswind gear bearing is inserted in the middle and then put the screw over it and tighten it down. Now looking here is we got a channel on our crosswind block and that channel is gonna fit onto that little cam that's sticking out on your crosswind gear. So make those two together. And notice what orientation I'm using, just like that. So if you need to pause the video and look at that orientation, just like that. <clears throat> now we can put in our main gear. And it's two little washers, uh, make sure those are on the main gear. Now we slide in our main shaft and we make sure that it aligns properly with our crosswind block, it is keyed. So it needs to be the appropriate orientation. 
and push it down. And make sure that the crosswind block hole and the hole in the main shaft are aligned. And we can take our crosswind block screw and tighten it down. And what that does is that secures the main shaft to the crosswind block and the crosswind gear that interfaces with the main gear. And then just rotate your rotor and make sure everything's going up and down correctly. Now we can take our side plate with this respective bearing in there and put in all of these star screws and tighten them down. <clears throat> just like that. Now we take our handle assembly, rotate it counterclockwise, then I'll hold the body and I'll tighten that handle down just a little bit more. And there you go. All right, now we're gonna assemble our spool. So grab your stripped down spool and then grab the spool bearing that slides right on in. Then we're gonna take our Teflon washer that goes in first. Then we're gonna take our externally keyed metal washer, throw it in the spool and it will seek alignment with its respective grooves. And then finally the friction carbon washer goes on top. Now we can take our drag plate, make sure the line clicker is facing towards you and put it on top. And make sure those two washers, those spool adjust washers, are inside of your drag plate. Make sure you, those weren't left behind. And then now we have our, what do we call that, retaining ring, drag plate retaining ring. Now that drag plate retaining ring has to have the correct orientation. All right, here's a close up picture of what I'm talking about. So you got the angles of the screw heads and they go into the crater of that uh, retaining ring or that drag plate retaining ring. Um, on the opposite side of that retaining ring, it doesn't have the groove, so make sure the, that, that crater is facing towards you. All right, now it's time to put in our top drag washers, and this is the uh, order at which they go in. So we're gonna take our externally keyed metal washer, that goes in first, our friction washer, which is just a carbon washer, then our internally keyed washer, friction washer, externally keyed washer, friction washer, which is carbon, and then the internally keyed uh, metal washer on top. And then we can take our retaining uh, ring and press it into the grooves. And I use a flat head to um, coerce it down into its respective groove and you'll hear it click and it'll lock into place. And that's how you hold all your washers together. Now the spool will go onto the main shaft you kind of have to rotate the uh, spool around. What I ended up doing was taking the drag knob, uh, screwing it down on the main shaft and applying pressure on that spool and all those drag washers. And then I turn the spool and then all those internal washers align and allows the spool to go down further on the main shaft. And then you can actually hear the spool start clicking. And that's when I know the, the line clicker is engaged. And you can see that the main shaft there is now uh, protruding further up above the drag washer. So screw the drag knob. It is clicking. I know that it's down uh, far enough when I can hear it click. So I can adjust the drag knob, uh, varying levels, make sure I have the appropriate drag, make sure that it tightens, loosens, and everything seems to work, um, which it does. And then I can activate my bail arm with the handle, spin it around, spools going up and down. So functionality works on the reel. And that is how you assemble your Captain Cabo uh, PT spinning reel. As always, thanks for stopping by and make sure you get out and go fish. We'll see you all later, bye.